Hello and welcome to the Impact Podcast. I'm Ed Kirchstaffer, Chief Operating Officer here at Mayo Performing Arts Center. We're recording this in early January. It's the first Zoom cast of 2024. We hope you all have a great, healthy, and happy new year and hope to see you many times here at Impact uh, throughout the upcoming year. Today, we're talking all things hairspray coming to Impact Friday and Saturday, January 26th and 27th. We'll be joined shortly by not one, but two Tracy Turnblads, Carolyn Eisman, who plays Tracy in the current tour, and Daniel Arce, who portrayed Tracy in a previous tour, will be talking about what it's like to play that role in uh, Hairspray. Hairspray is the Tony Award-winning musical comedy that tells the story of 16-year-old Tracy Turnblad in 1960s Baltimore as she sets out to dance her way onto TV's most popular show. And the musical ask, can a girl with big dreams and even bigger hair change the world? We'll be back with both Tracys just after a short preview of Hairspray. Hey, everybody. It's me, Tracy Turnblad from Hairspray. Broadway's Tony Award winning best musical is back featuring songs that are fresh, winning, and tuneful. Come see the mega hit about a girl from 1960s Baltimore, me, who dares to dream big and changes the world. Don't miss the warm-hearted musical comedy, Hairspray. Coming to Mayo Performing Arts Center in Morristown, January 26th and 27th. For tickets, visit mayoarts.org. Back on the Zoomcast, Ed Kirchdorfer, Chief Operating Officer, Mayo Performing Arts Center, Join today by not one, but two Tracy Turnblad. So it's Tracy Square today. We're talking all things Hairspray, which is coming to the theater on January 26th and 27th for three performances. Very excited to have Hairspray back on our stage. Always a, a fun show. So we are joined today by uh, Carolyn Eisman, Caroline Eisman, uh, who is the uh, current Tracy, and Danielle Arce, who portrayed Tracy in a previous tour, and I believe is a as a Marstown girl. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so welcome, ladies. Welcome to the welcome to the MPEG Zoom cast. Uh, Caroline, tell us about the tour. How's it going so far? Uh, and uh, what's it like being on tour? It is going wonderfully. We have been on this leg of the tour for about three months now. Um, I this is my second year with the tour, and I love. I love this life. It's so exciting. It's so fun. And bringing hairspray to all these communities is like the greatest gift ever. So we were just on a Christmas break and now we're back. We're in Tulsa, Oklahoma for the week. And it's so cool to see all the different parts of our country. Mm -hmm. And just tell us about your association with hairspray. Did you know much about the show before you audition? Were you a fan of the show or excited to be in this show or is this a, a, a new opportunity for you? Yeah, I first was introduced to Hairspray with the 2007 movie with John Travolta and Zac Efron. Um, and I was pretty young, but I was obsessed with it. I watched it a ton. And then I saw it live on stage for the first time in high school. And I was like, yeah, this one, it's coming back to me in some time or another. But it never did. I had never done it in high school and college. And then um, the summer after I graduated college last summer, 2022, I had the opportunity to audition and join the show as the standby for Tracy. So I did the show last year once a week and I got to obviously tour the country and experience a whole new way of life. And then this summer I was given the opportunity to take over the role full time, which has been such a wonderful like full circle moment. So when you take over the role full time, how much more of a physical experience is it for you now that you're performing the role probably five I'm going to guess maybe five times a week or so at least uh versus when you're in a standby role yeah I do seven shows a week now mm -hmm. um and it is wild mm -hmm. uh, Danny can attest to the fact that it mm -hmm. is like one of the hardest things I've ever done yes. emotionally, emotionally mentally but it is also one of the coolest things I've ever done so I I say like Yes, I'm exhausted, but I'm exhausted because I'm getting to do what I love every day. <laughs> <laughs> You're exhausted from having so much fun. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I mean, we did the show. It's three hours of nonstop fun. And we're like, yeah. oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so true. Danny, you were on the tour back in when? 
So 2009, I started until we closed 2010 and the tour was going to go back out 2011 and then it stopped and it didn't pick up until Caroline went back on. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, 2009 was when I started. Were you on the tour that came through Marstown? At yeah, yes, yes. So it was the final leg of the tour. And luckily when I got it, then I got the dates and Morristown was there and it was the ultimate dream because I grew up in Booton, but I, I currently live in Morristown. So local from Morris County. So like she's saying, you play all these, these states and cities and to play your hometown was just an absolute dream. And to this day still was just unbelievable. What did you like about doing the tour, doing the role of Tracy? Yeah, um, exactly what she's saying. I, I attest to all of that. Um, it's such an honor to play a role that, yes, she's the lead of a musical, but she's such a beautiful role to play. And as actors, those roles are once in a lifetime. So the fact that we even had that opportunity, have that opportunity, it's such a beautiful underdog story that like she gets the man in the end, she gets the dream dance job. And for us, it's just so fun to portray that and to tell that story. Um, so same thing that she said that when I first saw it, you know, instantly fell in love and then just an honor to play it every single night and bring that story to life to different families. And it, it just absolutely was a blast. So yeah, all the above to that. Now, have you had a chance to see this version of the tour yet? I haven't. I so hope to see it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Caroline, do you know if there have been, like you were a standby last year, now you're Tracy this year. Are changes made at all in the show from year to year? I mean, obviously it's a, it's, it's, it's a classic show. I think a show that they've used in 2020. 2002 is a classic show and it's yeah it is 20 something years now but do you the, do you make changes from year to year I'm curious if if the show that you toured in Daniel like, when you watch this show if you'll see like different you know the show taken in different directions yeah I I actually would be so curious to hear her answer too because Matt Lenz who is my director and her director as well they are very close-knit in regards to keeping it authentic and keeping it what it was when it originally came on Broadway with Marissa Jarrett Winokur in you know 2001 2002 so I would love to see if there were any kind of like bits after all these years that were changed but she will let us know this but I think it's very close to what it's been originally they love to like keep that authentic like kind of vibe but yeah I'd be so curious yeah we are there I mean there's inevitable changes year to year because different actors bring different bits and yes even, you know, I had the opportunity last year to be um, like inserted into a cast of people and so then this year to have a new cast create their own moments has been really beautiful to oh, watch yeah. But from the original 2002 version, we are doing almost all the same choreography and stage. I love it. Which is so cool. You know, Matt Lenz, as Danny mentioned, was um, the original associate director on Broadway 21 years ago now. Yeah. And Robbie Roby, who was our tour choreographer, he was Jerry Mitchell's dance captain on Broadway. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. We have this like original intention and... I, one of my favorite parts of this experience has been learning from the people who helped create it. Oh yeah. How gently and passionately they maintain the original image that Jack and Jack O'Brien and Jerry Mitchell had for the show 21 years yeah. ago. Yeah. It's so cool. And then to get to do that same and be like, oh my gosh, I'm doing the same blocking that my friend Nikki who played the show last year did and that Danny did and that Marissa did. Like, it's so cool. It's this, yeah. you know, line that keeps us all together yeah it yeah. really is it really is and from she'll attest to this but from a, a quick change in the show which is the song welcome to the 60s which is a choreographed quick change where you have one minute from get to get from one outfit to the next and when you would have like choreography practices just to get from one costume to the next and it's not you it's the folks around you who are technical staff who are helping you that for example that's something that if I mentioned to her what those beats were I'm sure to a T that those are exactly what they are because it's like there's no time to waste it's like you nail it or you don't yeah. um yeah that that's just a perfect example of like those little bits that are I just wonder like have they switched those up have those tighten those up you know that's just so fun uh have you because you have uh, members of uh who worked on the uh, original show have they brought out any of the creators of the show at any time and did ever have a chance to to meet any of, of the people who uh put this show together originally yeah, last year I met 
incredible people. I met both Jack O'Brien, the original director, and Jerry Mitchell, the original choreographer. And then Mark Shaman, who uh, was part of the score writing duo, Mark Shaman, Scott Whitman, we, he came and saw the show last year, which was so cool to be in the room with like a living legend. I mean, all these people are living legends, but I don't think if you would have told me two years ago, I'd be looking at Mark Shaman in the eye, I would have yeah. been <laughs> freaking out. Um, and then I think this month, it'll be really cool. Jack O'Brien will actually have the opportunity to see me do the show. Um, Great. Which- so excited about <laughs> that is so exciting they love it so much it means so much to them after all these years so they will they make it out to see it they care so much that's so exciting the show is hairspray we're talking to tracy of the present and tracy of the past uh caroline eisman who's with the current tour and danielle rc who is with uh, one of the original tours uh and appeared at impact uh, several years ago we also had the show uh, our, uh, we have a uh, performing arts school and we have a spring production that's done every year and they did Hairspray probably back in 20, I want to say 13 or 14 and it was such a fun show for all the, you know, it's, it's the cast is, is made up of uh, probably 12 to 25 year olds and it was such a fun show for them, they had so much fun and Mark Shaman actually threw a friend of somebody, um, came out and talked to them the the day before uh the uh opening night and it just jacked up the cast so much that's that, so exciting to, to <laughs> me, I, mean, I think he got such a kick out of it too to see that these kids had so much fun uh doing his putting his music uh oh. on stage and whatnot is there a, a particular what what is your caroline what's your favorite part about playing tracy what is it about her that makes her such a special character that is so beloved such a good question and also like the hardest question ever to answer. <laughs> um, I think, <sighs> I, I could say a billion things, but I think right now my favorite part of Tracy is her passion. Um, she faces a lot of little road bumps in her journey to getting what she wants. And she, you know, doesn't let the little things stop her or throw her. And I also think she learns along this journey how to listen to other people's passions and that's another thing I really love about her is seeing watch like watching how she opens her eyes to the people around her on stage and what about you Danielle what did you find about her that just made you fall in love with her yeah, absolutely. It's uh, a story that is brought to you from 1962 and 1962 Baltimore, where, you know, cookie cutter life, where you, you didn't think outside the box. You weren't allowed to think outside the box. You know, you were supposed to look this way, act this way, be this way. And here's this just firecracker of a girl who wants to break all the molds. And it, it gives me chills thinking about it because it's such, it's such a before it's time type of story that today that's what kind of life's all about. Like, you know, chasing your dreams, going for what you believe in. It doesn't matter what you look like, what, you know, color your skin is, um, how big, how small. It's just so important. And so for someone in 1962 to just want to like break all those molds, the story of Tracy Turnblad and Edna Turnblad, who's the mother of Tracy in the show, who has such an arc, you know, there's such a beginning and ending of her story. It's just such a smart, beautiful, before it's time type of message. And, um, you know, resonated in the same 60s and here in 2024 so just so important um to continue to be told mm-hmm. yeah i think that you know, there's the 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 theme throughout of, of acceptance and inclusion that's, yeah. that show is really you know, like ahead of its time and it almost resonates more today than it did back yeah. in 2002 Absolutely. Definitely. I absolutely agree. It's it's kind of incredible that it's like, that's our way of thinking here in like the 2000s, 2023 and four. But back in 1962, you can imagine that there were kids out there who just knew that there was more to life. There was more out there to go get and go grab. And it being such like a, a close knit city of, let's say, Baltimore, Maryland, where you think there's so much more out in this world. And um, at that time, the message um, of integration, that's so important that today we don't think twice about it. But, you know, kids and then our age back in their teen years, um, um, in the 60s, they they weren't allowed to think that way. They couldn't hang out with their friend of color. And so it is such a, an important story in regards to that message. Yeah, and just on the edge of that of the whole 60s revolution, too. So true. Bubbling in the, in the music there. Is there a particular song, Caroline, that you love to perform? What's your favorite out of the bunch? Or does it change depending on uh, on your mood? I have my, my favorites stay true. I mean, I think 
like the ones that are a little uh, scary or nerve wracking to me have started to change and shift and get a little more fun and easy. Um, but I will say my two favorites are I Can Hear the Bells. <laughs> I think it's like Danny was saying earlier, we get to tell this fairy tale story that, you know, girls who look like us in musical theater don't always get to tell. And I can hear the bells. It's just this like dream like sequence. And every night I get to tell it, I'm like, oh my gosh, is this real life? <laughs> um, and then I love, I know where I've been. I don't sing in the song. I get, I say, I get the best seat in the house because I get to watch what's going on around me. And I like to look at a different person every night and kind of see how the story is affecting them. And I think it's such a treat to listen and see how my peers are telling that story every night. Uh, uh, Tracy, <laughs> Tracy, you're both Tracy, Danny. <laughs> yeah, what was your favorite song? I can hear the bells is an absolute fairy tale. I completely agree. It's just a genius song. It's written so beautifully. The lyrics, it's just so sweet and beautiful. I, I second that. My favorite personally to sing, um, listen to to this day, think about, still hear, think of the lyrics because it means so much to me, is uh, Good Morning Baltimore reprise, which is Good Morning Baltimore's second time you hear it, which is going to be in the second act. It's after a time when, you know, Tracy's brought all of this to everyone's attention and she's now gone to jail. And she sings this song in a singular jail cell in solitary confinement alone. And what's so beautiful is she sings a, a lyric where you think it's going to be some revolutionary, I'm going to help everyone. And she just says something so simple as, I'll eat some breakfast, then change the world. And it's something so innocent to think of like a teenager saying like, I, I'm going to help you all. But I'm gonna I'm gonna take care of myself first and, and have some breakfast. And and she ends the song instead of saying, and I promise Baltimore, once I cha cha outside of that door, the world's gonna wake up and see. And in the beginning, she says Baltimore and me. And just very innocently at the end, she says, Link's in love with me, who Link is her dream crush. So again, it's a good all these little moments for her that like as a teenager just means so much to someone. And um, it's just such a beautiful song. So yeah, the reprise to Baltimore is my favorite. A good answer. <laughs> oh, it's so good. <laughs> you know, you're going from town to town. Do you are are you are you sitting for multiple days? I know you're here for two days, but I mean that's that's like you know that's like a a flash in the pan, right? So like so the how's a how's a travel? Uh, and I'm sure it's exciting to see all parts of the country, but it is probably you know and a demanding role in itself. So how 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 do you uh, just deal with all of that and and have you had any like really odd moments on the tour that you'd like to <laughs> with us maybe something that just kind of happened during a show that it's kind of interesting and bizarre yeah I we have this cool schedule where we do a mix of um those quick mm -hmm. visits and then we have a lot of week sit downs which I love I think it's so amazing oh you're so lucky I know you're so <laughs> lucky <laughs> um because you get to see the city and you get to give your body a break and it's really nice um the travel aspect of it is so hard I'm not gonna lie to you I don't do well on a bus so on those quick like day to days I'm always like I wish I could sleep on the bus more but um yeah I think one of my favorite parts about getting to take this around the country is seeing how different places react to different lines. Um, and there's, you know, different moments that we gauge are like, oh, like, do we think they're gonna laugh at this joke? And there are a couple of um, city specific ad libs in the show, which is really fun. You know, when you give a city shout out and the audience is like, oh my God, that's like about us. Um, and then at the end of the show, and Danny, did you do this? We do come on and we get to yeah. say the name of the city we were at we're in Dream. Yes. yes it's so amazing I like every night I'm like come on tonight it's Tulsa and everybody in the audience is like wait that's us that's it's Tulsa. incredible do your castmates say this as well I used to always get I forgot where we were and you reminded me where we were so at the end of what she's talking about of of you can't stop the beat our responsibility is to know what city you're in and what's so great about their tour schedule is these week sit downs where they can like get a good night's sleep 
um, you know, go see the city. It really is a perk when you're on a tour because we were on a last leg of a tour where we just did one nighters. We had once like 28 one nighters, like where you were just in, yes, can you believe it? 28 oh one nighters, yes, it's traumatizing to this day of you're in one city and you just, you just keep going, going. So it's like you do the show, you go to bed, you're up by four, you're on the bus until 12 noon. It's like, there's no stopping. So it was really kind of incredible to remember what city you were in and in these small towns. Um, but that is so funny because I wonder if your cast might say to you, I forgot where we were. Like, th thank you for reminding me I'm in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Like that is just so great. And and what she's mentioning when I got to say, come on Morristown, let's dance was literally one of the best experiences of my life. It was just so exciting. Um, but yes, all that's so great. Yeah, I we haven't hit the hard parts yet. We haven't done the one nighters yet. Oh, last <laughs> night or last year because I was the standby, I wasn't on for most of those one nighters. Okay. So I've already told my friend Skylar, he plays Link. He stands next to me at the end of um Good Morning or of a uh, I can't stop the beat. You can't stop the beat. Yeah. You know, this. And I'm like, you have got to help me out here. I can't be the only one responsible for remembering yeah. because I'm gonna forget. Yes. Um, but we do, we're got I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, and we're going home in February. And oh so I'm nice. Thinking about saying, come on, St. Louis. It gets oh. <laughs> it's so exciting it really is so exciting yeah come on Morristown let's dance was my favorite and then have you guys played Baltimore we played Baltimore and to say come on Baltimore was the other like extreme amazingness of of picking what city but wow you are going to how many shows do you have in St. Louis we have two shows in St. Louis oh so nice yeah so nice you'll you'll be able to savor it all with two shows I had just one in Morristown so it just doesn't even feel real because it was just just so exciting but two in St. Louis you'll savor it to your friends your family us oh, so exciting so excited the show is Hairspray coming to Mayo Performing Arts Center on January 26th and 27th we have three performances the uh, matinee is pretty much sold out but we still have some availability in the Friday and Saturday evening performances oh. we're with uh Caroline Eisman, who's perform who's playing uh, Tracy Turnblad, and also joined by Daniel Arce, who played Tracy in a in a previous tour. What do you hope that the person coming to see Hairspray gets out of it when they walk out at the end? Oh, I hope that they have fun, and I hope that they move. Um, they're moved, and that they leave with a little more um, faith in humanity and excitement for the day, because I think sometimes, um, we get so caught up in what's going on in the world around us that we go into live theater these days. And, um, a lot of people want an escape and our story, while it is an escape and while it is fun is still very prevalent and prominent in what's going on in the world around us. And so I hope that people are not only having fun, but also, you know, feeling hopeful for what the future holds. Danielle, did you ever have any instances where people were waiting by the stage door telling you about the show and what it meant to them and whatnot? Absolutely. It's such a beautiful gift as well to see the reactions from people in regards to, you know, just whatever they're going through in their life, if something may be going on, and for them to just like sit in a beautiful theater and check out of all of those woes and be able to receive this beautiful story, this message, the most incredible music, um, and just have such like a lively, fun, vibrant experience. And to get that feedback, absolutely. Seeing the joy from people, that really just made your job so just full and happy, uh, just to kind of like allow people to have that gift just for like one little moment and then go back to their life right after, that still is like the gift of hairspray for sure. Great. Well, we look forward to seeing the show in a couple of weeks here at MPAC. We thank you both for joining us today. Carolyn, best of luck with the rest of the tour. We'll see you soon. Danielle, if you're walking by, wave at the theater. Stop you by. got the it. They always like talking to people. Whatever. But, you uh, got it. But so what are you up to these days? Yeah, so I actually um, still uh, work as an actor and have a great agent and in the equity union as an actor, um, but a little bit of kind of branching onto another creative path. I started a bridal hair and makeup company about 10 years ago now. So I'm working with like lots of brides and grooms and doing a lot of makeup on special days. And it's just like another creative avenue that I've always kind of loved doing, like hands-on with people, but hands-on kind of like a little bit of just beauty aspect of um being behind the scenes, I would say. Um, and it's super fulfilling as well. I, I really enjoy it. And it's kind of like a 50-50, just juggling like kind of those creative avenues that you love. So very grateful for that.
Great. Well, thanks again for being on and we appreciate you uh, watching the Zoom cast. We'll see you at the theater soon. Thank you. Break a leg, Caroline, and the whole cast. Break a leg. Thank you. We'll see you soon. <laughs>